what I would like to do with you is a little experiment. Who has read the book? And I suppose very few of you, right? Okay. At least one person and a half. <laughs> the half is my uh, publisher, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to have ten words or very short sentences from anyone in the audience uh, about those expectations, anticipations, what the book suggests to you. To you. Anyone wants to start? Could be one word. Light. Light. That was easy. Mass advertising. Mass advertising. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Yeah. Wait, 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 not all the same. Uh, uh, city. Yes. Philosophy, and I heard voltage, right? Yeah. Technology. Technology. Irony. Buzzing. Yes. Colour. Interrogative. Okay. <laughs> Self. Self. Thanks for that one. Because I really don't know what I will say about voltage. <laughs> <laughs> so self is helpful. <laughs> well, self voltage. Yeah. Existence. 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 Uh, yeah, that's more than ten. So, let's stop here. Anyone that I didn't hear that is frustrated because I didn't hear because I. I said Oh, thank you. <laughs> Piss is that a word too? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have light, mass advertising, nostalgia, cities, philosophies, voltage, technology, irony, buzzing, message, interrogation, human. Was that human? No. Humor, humor. Uh, self, existence. Element and emptiness, and we'll start with that, self and mass advertising. The tradition of the French essay is more like you write as an adventure. You have this intuition, you have this impression, and that was really how the book started. I was walking along the Louvre one night uh, alone, and suddenly in the middle of this very traditional classical Paris the Louvre the Pont Neuf uh, really uh, you could almost see dead corpses from the middle age suddenly there's this neon that said fast food crepe kebab tea coffee pizza it was the entire globalization in one neon and uh, as we heard uh, this was really striking and I tried to avoid writing about that but suddenly uh, took over and one of the things that I realized is that well we are a bit like neon signs today it became an investigation on identity in the 20th century this idea that you know as a neon is made of gas and glass a very free element chaotic which expresses metaphorically <coughs> all the possibilities you really can't place those particles they seem to be even sometimes in two places at the same time and on the, on the other side this very rigid shape that is given to the glass that once given cannot be modified and I thought this was a really interesting metonymy for what identity has become in the 20th century this idea that we do have in order to survive sometimes we do feel like we have to become neon signs and we go to a job interview and we have to compress ourselves into this glass and say yeah I'm this person hire me and then you go to another job interview take another shape uh, and in fact of course we uh, yeah, there was you, you had another shape perhaps to no? <laughs> and so that was one of the things I started to uh, muse with. Is that an English one? To muse? Yeah. Yeah. 
um, this idea that okay, so what? How could we imagine a world in which we would be able to express much more of that uh, richness that we feel inside us? You know, I live in Sweden at the moment, and Sweden is a wonderful place, but it's a place where they really enjoy uh, diagnosis. So you meet someone, it's not like, hi, Peter, or it's, oh, James. More like, hi, bipolar, hi, um, <laughs> any, pick anything in the DSM-5. And I like to say, we are multipolar. That's what we are, we are multipolar. And then, of course, because we need to exist in society, we need to filter all that diversity into something. And that actually can have at least two faces. One that is negative, it's if we actually are constrained into a fake image of ourselves. But the other one is what artists have been telling us for centuries, and it's called style. And perhaps style is a good negotiation between the necessity of arranging our uh, diversity into something coherent yet personal, yet reflecting the uh, some inner truth about the self, although we can discuss with Sartre if there is something such as human nature. And so that emptiness becomes, in fact, those moments where we, we feel low and we feel empty, but in fact, perhaps we feel empty because we cannot express that diversity. I read recently that uh, some people are starting to speak about neurodiversity uh, in the sense that you know we, we have to accept more uh, uh, what are considered abnormalities you know like studying philosophy any of you have studied philosophy uh, when I started uh, and I was 2021 20, it was considered a disease <laughs> And we got the word philosophy, by the way. Good. I should I should cross them when I mention it. Okay, live. We got that message. Mass advertising. Well, mass advertising. We could uh, develop a bit on that. Expand a bit, as we say in academia. Cut or expand. And what we could expand on is this time. I will have a, a little bit of a historical parenthesis. Is the fact that neon were so popular in the 20th century that, um, okay, a little bit of an in interrogation here. Uh, that's another word, okay, interrogation. Uh, who was the Nazi minister of propaganda? Goebbels. Yeah. So Goebbels uh, displayed a huge neon over the streets of Berlin uh, with Ein Volk and Hashem. Another example is how the, um, the Russian, uh, the Soviet, uh, block uh, realized that neon was really an expression of uh, the triumph of capitalism. So they said, We are going to have our neons to, and there was a program. So, neonization was we put neons to show that we also are successful uh, and that our life is also shiny. The problem is that they didn't have enough shops. <laughs> so, they decided to use neons on facades of university libraries, for example. Which is interesting because I discovered uh, in doing the research that uh, neon was not only invented in Paris, but w in the first years it was considered an object uh, of luxury, luxurious decoration. And today, of course, when we think about neon, it has become an, an, an object of nostalgia, indeed because it has been replaced by LED and one of the differences that I find striking between LED and neon lights is, we were talking about that before, is if you look uh, at LED lights very close, you see that there are points, discrete points, right, which is, and now they are controlled by computers, so it's really analogous to uh, the, the bytes. By the way, I was at the airport uh, the other day here in London 
And I saw an advertising for a bank that I will not name, but you will recognize it. And it was like a very triumphant slogan that said, we are preparing a world of bites and boxes. <laughs> and I thought, is this ironical? Irony, yep. Okay, that's done. I didn't do voltage yet, and I don't know how I'm going to do that. But... <laughs> and that's really the world that actually we might feel nostalgic for. A world that was, yes, in a way, already uh, representing the, for example, the capitalization of night, right? With, but still, a world that was ambiguous enough to leave some space for the myth of freedom, for example, which was so important uh, and which was perhaps transformed through uh, the marketing of self-realization into uh, this, again, this neonness. But today, even that fiction of freedom, one might argue, is disappearing. And we might be again in a world of progressive full control bites and boxes and so the paradox is suddenly neon which was a symbol of capitalism becomes a more ambiguous symbol because there is still this plasma this gas this freedom that actually one might expect can still explode the glass but can LED light explode the, the glass? Probably not. It will self replicate like Terminator. I think they're on seven now. And here it would be easy to place voltage. I just did. <laughs> Someone said buzz. Yeah. When Neon's going a bit wonky, it starts to buzz. Yeah, that sound, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very good conclusion because Simon and Garfunkel. You call it the sound of silence. And here, I stop. Thank you. Yeah.